Uh, well, I'm going to go through a little bit of presentation with a few words, and then I'm going to give you a lightning demonstration and some cooking lessons. I think you've all had something to eat, and so we're going to tell you how to make it work. Anyway, this is about Compatible One. It's an open source cloud services broker. But intermediation, aggre aggregation, arbitrage, Cloud Services Broker, it refers to the market, model and roles that support the intermediation between cloud services and cloud consumers. Everybody knows all that. It's about freedom of choice, hopefully, and no vendor lock-in. It's about trust and about governance. It's quite easy to read. You can, check, you can pick up all this on the website. This is our usual presentation, but seeing as I've only got 15 minutes, I don't want to spend all of it doing slideware. So that's enough of the slideware, and let's go and have a look and see how it works, because that's what it's all about, really. Anybody who doesn't know or doesn't want to know what it's about, then that's fine. It's time to sleep after the meal. So we've got a now a new dashboard which allows us to log in to Compatible One. It's only for demonstration purposes, and it doesn't intend to, to uh, provide you with the ultimate tool. It just shows you how to do a few things with Compatible One and kind of show you that it works. So. Basically, what I've been doing is opening up a manifest. This one's already loaded up, but I just wanted to give you a quick look into a manifest and see what it looks like. Um, this any manifest, hold on a second, I've just got to charge an instance of a virtual machine somewhere in the world to have WordPad, thank you. Uh, so here we have a compatible one manifest. It's called any, it's actually capable of providing, using any provisioner, as you can see here. It'll load a Ubuntu image. So. This manifest, if we pass it into the system, then we can actually use it quite nicely to do provisioning. Let's make a new OW2 conference SLA. Now, some things take a bit of time to cook. So let's do a Windows Azure one right away, because that's going to need a few moments to, to cook up while we go and go other ones. So. Demo one's the account, the provider, we're going to put that up as Windows Azure. And honestly, I'm not getting paid to do this by these guys. It just happened to fall that way. So we generate the SLA and pass it. So here we've got the SLA, and we can see that the manifest here is any. We can also see that the provider information in the SLA is Windows Azure. There's been a bunch of passing operations on OCCI, but I think everybody here knows Compatible One knows OCCI now, so I'm not going to go into that in a great amount of detail. And then we can go back and we can pick up the OW2Con Azure. Now, this has created a provisioning plan, which is a lot more complicated than the manifest, as you can see, but it shows the system how to build um, service. So here we go. We're going to start provisioning a machine on Windows Azure. Now, Back in the kitchen, let's have a look here and see how it's cooking behind the scenes. For the moment, up, we don't have anything coming up, but that'll happen in a second or two. So while that's starting up in the background, I'm going to go and change, change view, and I'm going to pick up, build another SLA. This time, we're going to make it an OW2Con, and we call this one an open stack. Up, open stack. The worst thing about using a microphone is that you find up needing a third hand. OK. Anyway, that's there. Now, I'm going to use uh, the account demo 2, because demo 2 provisions on the new OW2 OpenStack platform, which we're running. And the provider here, we're going to set that one to be OpenStack. So basically, up, we are going to pass this way through this new one. Generate and pass. Created a new SLA for the manifest any for the provider OpenStack. So that looks good. Go on to the provisioning page. And we can create a service. But first, let me choose the right plan. OWCon OpenStack. There we go. We're going to create the service for that one. Now, this is going to happen a little bit quicker, simply because the platform in question is rather a small one. I'll we'll have a quick look at the platform itself while that's happening. And if we're fast enough, we might actually catch it provisioning. Um, yes, here we go. Oops, I might have been too slow. It looks now it's happening. It's coming in. There you can see it. Oh, it's actually done now. So that one's cooked quite quickly. Um, we can go back to Windows Azure is actually starting to provision the, the platform. So that's working really well. 
This is a, a Ubuntu system, as I said earlier on. It'll take a little bit longer because, I mean, it's a, it's a much larger scale provisioning platform and there's a lot more work going on behind the scenes. The small one, DoW2, is actually only provisioning for us and so consequently there's not any competition or multi-tenancy aspects involved. But uh, this gives you an idea of, you know, the, the reality of the cloud. So, um, what I did, I was here yesterday and we did a, a big presentation of uh, how things can work. And uh, one of the things that we pulled in was an SLA for the XWiki system, if I can find it. Uh, no? XWiki Cassandra, that was the one, yeah. Now that's uh, quite a big one. It's a three node system uh, whereby we have, well, that's actually the, um, the SLA that is provisioned for it. As you can see, it's a lot more complicated, but in this case we had um, a business value and a variable for a guarantee, and the guarantee was such that it would start generating penalties if the user count or the number of logged in users went above one. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an, SSL, an SSH connection here, so I can't actually prove that, but uh, if anybody wants to come and play with it elsewhere, then they can do so. Um, that uh, has actually been provisioned, if I remember rightly. But, um, let's have a look and see what services we've got up here. So we've got three, so I don't think it has. So we can give it a try. Why not? Might as well live dangerously for the last sort of a quarter of an hour of my life before compatible one flows me away. Yep. Come on, let's go at this up. Um, provisioning. Let's try launching that. XWiki Cassandra. Create an instance. It's a way, and we'll have to have a look at the Enavance dashboard for this because that one's provisioned on the Demo One account, which is using the Enavance. Now, as you can see here, we're actually performing federation across different OpenStack platforms and Windows Azure on an account to account basis, so on tenancy basis. Um, this can actually be performed using the uh, brokerage engine uh, with respect to quality of service, with respect to security, with respect to technical capabilities, or even just a round robin bin packing method where maybe a hundred different OpenStack providers would be offering their resources and their, and their machines, or a hundred whatever providers were offering infrastructure and the broker was actually distributing the load amongst everything. Now, the interesting thing about this XWiki example, here we've got him coming up now. He started, so in a few moments the, uh, the Cassandra will happen. As you see, I've just launched the provisioning of one SLA um, and everything just starts happening automatically. Well, we tend to call that real automation as opposed to the usual carbon-based automation. Most provisioning occurs in carbon-based format where a telephone call arrives and the carbon entity wanders across and types things on the console. Whereas here, one click on the system by a human user or by a programming can actually launch the provisioning of really complex systems. So here we go, that's Cassandra happening. Unfortunately, I have to click on the instances and volume so that it actually updates the display but promise you that uh, the provisioning is actually happening in the background automatically. Well, Cedric, what's time doing? Is it looking good? Five minutes, whoa, thank you, Alex, that's really good. So we've got plenty of time to see this come to the end of its conclusions. So what about Windows Azure? So Windows Azure has nicely provisioned its machine. Okay, so uh, here is running, and that's about the best of it for the moment. I could actually log into it if I wanted to through this address, but seeing as I, as I said before, I don't have SSH access, I can't actually connect to that machine. If, however, the uh, application, which is looking quite good here actually, um, if the XWiki application gets to completion in time, then we would be able to connect to the XWiki application through its public address, which 953... Which would be this one, 128103. So I'm going to pick that up and get ready for the eventuality that it does get through in time. That's the trouble with cooking lessons, although you're supposed to leave it in the oven for sort of seven or eight minutes, it is really up to your own judgment to see whether it's got burnt or not. Okay, HTTP, colon, slash, slash, e. now the XWiki is running on the 8080. Let's keep that in our back pocket while we're waiting for the things to come through. 
Up still the first Cassandra node. So this one's slowing down a bit. The, as I say, this is a, a provisioning platform. It's a full-scale production platform at Enervance. So there is work going on here as well, like there is on the Windows Azure platform. This one here is running nicely, so it's kind of representative of a, a private cloud, a private OpenStack cloud. This is more a public OpenStack cloud, and obviously this is the, the public Microsoft uh, Windows Azure platform. So I guess we could have one more look at something else while this is happening in the background. Is it, all of this is kind of financial, okay? So if we take a demo one and say, okay, let's create an invoice for demo one, he's gonna do the processing, all the transactions that have been generated by the provisioning that has been going on on this account for the last four or five days. So uh, there's probably gonna be quite a lot in there. The prices are obviously fictive and um, they're not to be, they're not legally binding. But uh, as you can see here, this is the list of transactions that were generated during the production of all these platforms for a grand total of 69.33 euros. Wow, that's a pretty good guy, considering we've done quite a lot of work in the last couple of days. So how is Enervance getting on? The second Cassandra is finished. The third one is up on its way, so that'll be there soon. Do we have time to finish this, Cedric? Two minutes, yeah, it's gonna be good, it's looking good. So we've got the, this one still waiting for the affair. I'd like to get out to the, the final proof of the, of the provisioning because it's something that we didn't manage to do last year. Uh, last year we did a, a provisioning operation which was similar to this. It was the proof of concept number one whereby we showed the possibility of automatic provisioning with compatible one, but we didn't actually show the, the cake finished. So uh, this time to, uh, to finish the story of compatible one, so to speak, I'd like to see it actually access the final product. So. Come on, Cassandra. Then everybody gets down on their knees and says something nice to it. Maybe it'll come through a bit quicker. Or if anybody can call uh, an avance to pedal a bit faster, maybe that'll do the trick too. Okay. In the meantime, are there any questions about all this? Yes? You showed a, a, a web page uh, uh, with the, the price of what you, you did. Uh, it would be interesting to have a, a, the price of what you plan to do. Is it realistic? Well, Compatible One is an open source collaborative project, so please feel free to help. <laughs> <laughs> So, Cassandra seems to be up and running. Um, let's give it a whiz, let's see if that works now. I mean, it's possible he's not actually up and running yet, but uh, life's uh, like that. I think your question was probably well positioned to try and get this through. Whoa, we've got, uh, thank you. I think I'll stop there. <laughs> Pardon? Well, I think it's quite obvious. We've just, we've just provisioned XWiki, okay? So XWiki is a front-end application server running on Java LAMP stack, and uh, it's connected to a double replicated uh, Cassandra database in the background. I mean, we could look into it if you want to. This is the page to edit. I mean, it's fully operational. If, uh, so, welcome to OW2Con. And... Thank you very much. Thank you.